Hi, my name is Hugh from the Mini Specialist and today I'm changing the water pump on this Mini Cooper S. New water pump and as you can see there's only five bolts on this so in principle not difficult to change however getting to it is always a problem because it's buried right down here. In fact you have to take off the wheel arch lining and then we have to take off this area here, this, this bar here, the headlight and then we take off the top engine mount just to get access to the top bolts on this. Now this engine over here, same engine, there's our water pump. We have to take this tensioner off as well. So one, two, three bolts on that, just to get to these. One word of advice really, before you suspect this water pump, just check water isn't coming out of this side here, because this is very prone. The water pump does go, it can leak, but this pipe is also a culprit for leaks. It connects from the thermostat housing and goes to the back of here. Now, if you look at this, that is damaged. It's an old one, clearly. There should be a rubber ring around there and it should have a firm fit in there. And it is just a pressure fit because it's held in place by the bolts that hold the thermostat in. But if that leaks, changing your water pump won't fix your, your leak. So just double check that before you go any further. Remove the bolts, these headlights. Now, these headlights should just unbolt and four bolts and they should come away. However, sometimes these captured bolts here, these are bronze or fossil bronze or something in plastic, they can corrode and then spin so you won't get them out. And that's happened on this one here. I can't get this bolt out. However, I can lift the headlight far enough to remove this bar. When removing bonnet catch, just uh, lever this thing out. You need to prise out uh, the cable, open that up, and then you can just pop this out. Um, easy enough. Just make sure you put it back in and test its function before you close the bonnet. Because if this doesn't catch in there properly and it pops out, opening the bonnet becomes a very difficult job indeed. So I've already removed these fixing, so I'm just going to take off this part, these um, T30s, these hold the, uh, the bonnet, uh, hold the fasteners, these need to come off. Let's remove this now. Now there is a bit of a trick to get this off in its entirety. So here is a bit of trim, you can lever this off, feed it through, like so, the rest of that will go through and that allows you to take this away completely and get it out of the way. The next thing I'll do is remove as much of this as I can. So there is a clip down here. So there's a spring clip down there which you can remove and that allows you to take that out and I'll take this jubilee clip off here and that gives me some access. You can, if you want to, take the whole thing out but that removes, means getting your hand down there, removing a bolt goes into the plastic housing and getting the, uh, the Jubilee cloth off, off the bottom. If you can avoid doing that, then I would at this stage. So these Jubilee clips are uh, also seven mil hex bolts. So seven mil bolt put on there, that helps get that off. I can remove that now. Now that gives me enough wiggle room now to get to the top engine mount. That's all I need to do. I'm now gonna remove the wheel arch liner. The wheel arch liner is held in by a variety of clips and actually a lot of these are missing in all the wrong ones. There should be fixings in all of these. That's uh, the wrong bolt, it should be a, a T30 and that should be a T30. And down here we should have a 10mm bolt and a fixing. So it's tempting just to take the minimum out and peel it back. I don't like doing that. It's because these are normally full of dirt just remove it, put it to one side, it makes life a lot easier. So with the wheel arch liner out, we've got a good chance of seeing now what we're after. So while we're here, check the condition of this uh, auxiliary belt pulley because they're only about 10 quid each and it's not worth taking it off and putting a bad one back on. So this is our tensioner and that's our flywheel on the water pump. So this needs to come off, and then that needs to come off. Uh, but the first thing we need to do is to remove the, this uh, belt, this zip tie, like so, and 
there should be a little hole in it that latches so it's tensions off. Don't forget to put this back on afterwards. If you don't, the water pump won't engage and uh, the car will overheat. Tension off the auxiliary belt, you're going to need one of these. And that bolt, that silver bolt up there, is the one we need to get onto. So we get our we span it onto it like that and we pull it back and there's a pin at the top that we have to put in. So uh, I need two hands for that. Uh, tension to release. We've got that pin just there. That's pushed in now. So take the tension off this, reach through, push that pin in off this belt and allows you to, to slip it off. So remove this belt now. With the belt removed, you can see the first bolt we need to take out is this one. That's a 10 mil, they're all 10 mil. And to get to them, I purchased a nice little socket set called Werra. This is a low profile socket set. So here's a very low profile uh, 10 mil socket that allows you to get up inside the wheel arch and, and get to those difficult to get to bolts. So the first one, before taking the engine mount off the top, I'm just going to get to this one because I, uh, I can see it, it's easy to get to and it's a case of just... There we go. So these are the bolts you're removing. That's it. The next thing you need to do is to support the engine. So I've got a jack down here with a block of wood on the top, just on the bottom of the sump. I've just taken the pressure off. And now I'm going to take this bolt off first. This is an 18 mil, the rest are 13. We also need to take this uh, strap off. Now there's a capture, there's a bolt that will drop out the bottom there. So make sure you capture this before if you lose it. We'll take that off next. The earth strap first, finger underneath. Put the earth strap off. If you forget to put this earth strap back on, the car won't turn over. Uh, but it is a bolt, a nut and bolt. But it is a nut and bolt, so you do need to. Uh, I, I put it back into the engine mount just so I don't lose it. Now, by dropping the car down and lift. The engine will come up because I'll take the top bolt out. And that gives me the ability to take off these 13s. There, we can just about see the top of the tensioner and see the water pump pulley. So that now gives, starts to give us some access to these points. Now I have raised the car up. The engine is now supported only by this bottom bracket here and the other side. It's not going anywhere but it does give me access to these bolts, which I need to get off. So I've got two at the top of this, those three here, and then at the bolts behind the water pump itself. So let's, let's get these off, uh, and then we can go further to remove this. Let me try and get some video on this, but it's very tight up here, as you can see. But I can get access to these bolts now. Uh, Uh, right, we've got the tension off now. This one doesn't have an electrical connector. Some do. So it's easy to take the collector off when you've released it. So that's put, pull it out, take to one side, and that allows us now access to that water pump wheel. Now there's just enough access here for a, a decent socket onto this, and you can turn the wheel around to get to the next one. So if you've got an impact driver, you'll still. Yeah. That's come off very, very easily. Round for the next one. Just getting to the bits, that's the hard part. Once you've got access. I'm going to very little pack the engine in here. All right, so now we can see our water pump. We can also see that there's water dripping 
from the seal here. And there's our, there's one, two, three, there's one up there and one at the top to get to. So I'm not going to film this next bit because I don't think I can, but you can see what needs, needs to be done. What I've done here is I've strapped up a bucket underneath the water pump. So I hope that this will catch nice my coolant without making too much of a mess. Let's see. The water pump uh, out. I've managed to catch most of the water and that's the uh, site where the water pump goes. Now this one is quite clean uh, and I've already on this car changed that pipe that I mentioned earlier which comes into here. So, but it's always worth, I think, sealing this with a bit of gasket goo if you've got this far because this does wear and uh, just while you're here it's easy to get to. It's in place. When you tighten these up, you don't need to go mad. They just need to be nipped up and it's more important that they're ill even than you know, super tight because if you put too much pressure on one, it'll leak out the other side. It's only aluminium after all. But that's our new water pump in. Now I'm going to put this uh, wheel back on and reassemble. Just a quick word to the wise. So when you're putting this wheel back on, don't get the nuts mixed up with the ones that came out of here. The short bolts are for the wheel for the water pump. The longer bolts are for the tensioner. If you get them mixed up and put the long bolts in the, in the wheel, uh, the wheel won't turn. And I've put the uh, auxiliary belt back on. So there's two things you've got to do with the aux belt. <coughs> Firstly, make sure that it's sat in uh, the grooves properly. This is a grooved uh, wheel. So that should be nice and uh, flush when you press down on it. I'm the same here. All right, second thing is we need to release this zip system to engage uh, the, that tensioner with this friction wheel drives that uh, water pump. So that's very important. And then we've got to release the tensioner bolt, which is up here. So we need our uh, tensioner release spanner again. We can put it up, find it there. All we need to do is pull back on it and that pin pops out on its own and now that's tensioned. Now that all remains is we've got to put our engine mount back on, connect up the pipe work, put the uh, bar back in, headlight back in and then uh, refill the water system. Now I'm going to cut now straight to that and show you how to bleed the airlocks out of the water system. And I'm just putting the bonnet release catch back. These get damaged. So what I generally do is I put them through the holes, but then zip tie the whole assembly onto this uh, metal brace because the last thing you want is that coming loose. And the next thing you've got to make sure that ball goes in and that's like so. So the, the really good idea now is to push these into a position where they're locked and test it by pulling the bonnet release catch. Just got to find a tool that will uh, push these down. There we go. And this other one. Uh, it's got a, that's it. That's caught now. And that's in the locked position. So just got to make sure that when we pull the release catch, it works. And it does. So as you can see, that's released. We're good, good to go. Now when you top up the uh, header tank, you've got to bleed the system. And this thermostat, this, that's what it looks like, is down there. Now that plastic bolt is that plastic bolt down there. And because it's plastic, if you unscrew it all the way and then drop it, you're not going to get it back with a magnet and it's really, well, difficult to see. The other thing is you don't need to remove it all because this is a grooved, it's got a grooved uh, shank on the bolt. So if I show it, take it out, you'll see there is a flat section. So all you need to do is to undo it, maybe two turns, so that air and of course water can come out of the top. So I'm just gonna undo this before I top up the radiator. So do, I'm going to do a couple of turns, that's all I need. Now when you look inside here, that's the bleed at the top, so it allows, allows air out the top there. 
That pipe is the supply to the heater. And if there's air in the top there, if the water's only up to that point, the heater won't get any water. So you'll know by the heater not working if there's an air lock in here. So that's the heater supply, heater return, radiator supply, radiator return, that goes to the header tank and that goes to the water pump. So just turn that till water comes out of the top of the thermostat and then you know there's no air in the thermostat. I'm just going to put the wheel arch liner back in. These are the correct bolts for there and there. This car had uh, some strange 10 mil bolts in there. So these are flush T30. Uh, it doesn't really matter, but uh, I try and uh, always put the, the right stuff back in the right place. So there we go. It's running back in now. Unlike when it came out, I've replaced all of these fixings with new ones. I'm just a bit weird like that. I like to put things back as they should be. Uh, this one, this casing, the, that goes inside and bolted and bolted. So that's it, job done. Wheel goes back on, make sure the system's bled and we are finished. Well, I hope that was useful. Please subscribe. And if you have any questions, I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you.